Welcome to Tech Challenge Makers Conquer E-Commerce. I'm Elise, your resident tech expert and author of the book, Browser vs. Buyer. I've worked with entrepreneurs for over six years, and I've helped hundreds of creatives overcome their technology fears. Gain clarity and direction in your business with Elise's E-Commerce Elevator six-month group coaching program. Join now at myscheduledbiz.com slash elevator. The link is in the show notes. Today, we'll be talking with Jill Bruton, the founder of Jill Bruton Copywriting. As a kindergarten teacher turned copywriter, Jill stands out in her ability to quickly build an atmosphere of honesty and trust with an audience whose attention span is fleeting. Her passion is to fuel the growth of other small businesses, one web page, email, and blog post at a time. By the end of this episode, you'll understand how adding a blog to your e-commerce site is helpful both for search engine optimization and customer connection. The technology that you can use and walk away with one action step. Jill, I am so glad to have you here today to share your expertise with us. Can you just tell us a little bit about your business and your experience with e-com? Oh, Elise, thank you for having me. Yes, I'm happy to. So as a copywriter, I typically help small businesses and solopreneurs, um, whether they're service or product-based. And um, what I'm typically doing is helping them build their websites. I don't design them, but I do write the copy for them um, or their webs or their emails, whether it's funnels, newsletters, but something else that I've been adding lately are business blogs, because we have seen the huge benefits that those have um, for businesses, especially the e-commerce businesses. Okay, awesome. Now that's exactly why we have you here, because you actually know what you're talking about. And that's essential <laughs> to being able to come on here and share your expertise. So let's jump right into the questions if you don't have any objections. Nope. Let's go. How does a blog improve an e-commerce website? So give us the down and dirty. Why does a blog actually help an e-com business owner? Before we jump into the rest of the episode, please share this podcast with other business owners that it can help. Also, be sure to stick with me to the end of the episode to learn your challenge for today and implement what you've learned. Awesome. So I'd say that it has two main functions for an e-commerce site. So one is to create customer connection because, you know, when it's an e-commerce website, everything is online and it's virtual. So it's great to have this more human component of writing that's really addressing people where they're at. And it's great too, because there's no character count on a blog. You can have them as, you know, as short or as long as you'd like it. Yes, there's suggested lengths, but in, you know, it's not like you're stuck constrained like a different social media platforms. With a blog, you have so much freedom to be able to really say what you want to say, to educate them, to entertain them, to do a little bit of both, to do both and kind of lead them towards a persuasion, again, in a good way for your business, because you have the solution they need, not in a yucky way. Um, so there's that human element of connection and really being able to like chat with them in a sense. Then there's also an SEO component. So SEO is search engine optimization. So with SEO, you want me to explain what that is a little bit? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, it's the teacher side of me coming out. So SEO, like I said, search engine optimization. It's basically how likely are you if people Google something similar to what your business is or offers, how likely are you to pop up in a search um, specifically like and you really want to aim to be on that first page of a search? Because I mean, really, like, let's think who actually clicks and scrolls to the second one. So first page is where you want to be. So for a blog, it increases um, the, it, it's good for beneficial for your SEO because it allows you to do a few things. It allows you to have um, keywords that are what they're searching for, as well as it adds a component where you're able to use backlinks um, to increase your credibility as a business. So using backlinks, guys, for those of you who don't know, it basically what she's talking, which Jill's talking about is putting someone else's link to their site mm -hmm. on your blog, because if that site is credible, then the robots think that you are probably credible too. So it's sort of like mm -hmm. stealing their credibility to make yourself look better, but of course do it like nicely, <laughs> not, not yeah, gross. Like guilt by association in a good way. You're giving them credit. You're not taking it. You're just like, oh yeah, yeah, they're good. Like, yeah. It's a nod to them. This also really works really well with something else that I teach, which is to do collaborations and partnerships. So if there's someone that you may want to partner with and you talk about them on your blog and you end up sending traffic to their site, they will notice that. So it's another really great way to get you noticed. So it actually could get you help three ways if you're really smart about how you do it. Look at that. <laughs> Love it. Hey, I am all for adding the most amount of value in the smallest package. Why not? A hundred percent. Okay. So blog guys, 
it's like your social media posts, only you can go in more detail. You can be even more interesting and you get credit from the bots, from your people and from potential partners. How can you beat that? So um, now for what we are known for on this podcast, and that is tech. So Miss Jill, how does technology play a role in blogging? Yes. So full disclosure, when I started figuring out how to blog, I was searching things. I was on YouTube searching how to blah, 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 because I knew how to do the writing for it. But I did not at first understand the tech piece. I got to the blog template and I was like, what? So um, there's a few, <laughs> seriously. So one of the things that you need to be um, cognizant of, and that can really help you, um, especially in the realm of SEO, but also just in general formatting and how it looks aesthetically, are using proper headings. So there's heading one, which is like your biggest title. Then there's heading two, which is somewhat smaller, heading three, and it goes all the way down. Um, so the one is the biggest. And then as the numbers increase, they actually get smaller. So when you're organizing your blog post, if you're using headings um, in an effective way, it allows the Google bots as well as real people to be able to skim your post and get um, the most information out of it like efficiently and, and quickly. So um, being able to use those headings and format things properly is huge, but also with the backlinks, um, being able to insert those in ways that are meaningful and not just random. So that's kind of a writing as well as a tech piece, being able to marry the two. Um, yeah. You just so yeah, hundred percent. You have to know how to use the headings for sure. Um, and I know Jill, when we were talking before we started recording, what platform you're on is going to dictate to some degree oh. how you can use these effectively. So yes. just like Jill said, you can always Google this, look for help with this, go to YouTube, whatever you need to do to I'm figure it too. out. Um, <laughs> you can also use tech to find someone who's awesome to help you with your blogs, like Jill. <laughs> so not only can the tech help you make sure that every blog that you're writing will get you the most bang for your buck by making sure you're formatting it correctly. Those of you who have taken my YouTube classes, no, I'm all about SEO on YouTube. This is very, very similar. And so you can make sure that that blog is not a waste of your time because we want to make sure that it's going to reach as many people as possible. And it's going to actually answer your customers' questions. And so using yes. the tech makes sure that that happens. Um, and it, when they get there, that it looks pretty. Because if you get to a blog and it's like a hot mess and it's everywhere, as much as the writing can be amazing, people aren't going to want to read it. They need, you know, a picture to grab their attention and those headings to see the big letters and read them first and be like, ooh, I want to keep reading. So when you format it too, it's also helping, you know, just their eye and, and the psychology of, you know, the brain kick it in. And, yes, I want to read this. So that's big too. Even though we all know a blog is a longer form thing than say a social media post, there's also this um, aspect of we all have attention spans that are this big, right? So your headings help tell them where to read. Like I almost never read something in, in, in its entirety online. Almost never. No one does. I, <laughs> no I scan does. through it and I go to the parts that I'm interested in. And that's what the headings do for you. Yes. Yep. Just, I don't know, almost like textbooks, you know, except way more fun. I think <laughs> way more fun, hopefully <laughs> way more fun. <laughs> it's, I mean, similar outline, you know, it, it's logical. It makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So one final question. And that is, what is one piece of advice that you would give to every e-commerce shop owner who's been thinking about or is currently doing blogging? Ooh, say, well, I say if you aren't, my advice is to just go for it. Uh, it's not going to be perfect at first. It's going to take time. But the sooner that you start a blog or the sooner that you reformat one and, and start, you know, to really make yours efficient, the sooner that you're going to gain that SEO benefits from it um, and be able to have, because, you know, it, it takes time. That's part of SEO too, is it's a long game. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, but eventually those backlinks and those keywords and that consistency, all the little robots will start noticing that stuff. And it, it'll, you know, that's where the benefit comes from is it's, it's a long game. Um, so yeah, my advice is go for it. If you're not sure, ask professional. I love helping businesses set up their blog. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do because I love getting to watch that growth and being able to be the connection piece between them. So either go for it or find someone who can help you. Love it. Love it. And okay. So I want to, I feel like we would be doing a disservice to blogging if we didn't bring this up. So I want to talk about organic traffic. So Ooh, this yeah. is something that everybody says, I want organic traffic. I want organic traffic. I want organic traffic. But very few people are able to actually implement something that helps them get it. 
And from all my research, one of the best ways to improve your organic traffic is by doing blogging, which is why I teach in my YouTube course to blog, even though it doesn't seem like those are related. So guys, if you are one of those who has been searching for a way to get good organic traffic, and you've been spending tons and tons of time on social media, and you don't feel like you're getting there, maybe a blog is your next step. Because this is what makes the bots happy and the people happy, which is how you get organic traffic. Yes. Preach. I totally <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> okay. Was there anything else you wanted to share with the visitors before we go into our final thing, which is um, just to kind of share where they can come up with you? Oh, goodness. I feel like we covered most of it. I mean, those those backlinks, are, I didn't know about them at first either. And so I understand what it's like to hear all these terms and they're all floating around on the internet. And you're like, what, a who, a where, a what? And it's just, it's so overwhelming. So I'm so glad they have a place like you and your, you know, your search so that they can understand all those crazy terms. I wish I had had you when I was first starting out, <laughs> but I'm glad to, to be able to help them, uh, you know, help your listeners understand a little bit more about blogging because it can seem either so simple or so complicated. And you know, I just, I want to make, help it, make it accessible to them. So, well, we really you. appreciate you coming on and talking with the visitors. Um, I do think that this is something that quite a few of them have been considering. So I think that this will be helpful for them. So guys, if you need more help, you can always reach out to Jill. If you need help brainstorming topics, et cetera, I'm sure she'd be happy to help you. And of course, as always, you can post questions in the visitors group. But in addition to that, Jill, can you tell them where they should connect with you? Yes. So um, I am probably most active on um, Instagram, um, but I also do have a Facebook page. It's at Jill Bruton Copy, J-I-L-L-B-R-U-T-O-N-C-O-P-Y. Um, and that link will be showing website. up below our faces also, so you can see it down here. Oh, yes linked in the, in the details below. Um, but I'd love to connect with you on social media. I'm also on LinkedIn if you find my face. Um, and if you want to check out, I, so truth be told, I barely started my own blog. I have been writing everyone else's blogs and putting mine on the back burner. So if you've been putting it off, don't feel bad. I, this is literally my job. And I just finally started mine in the beginning of this year. So it's never too late. Um, but yes, I'd love to connect. Okay, and Jill, I believe that you have something really awesome to potentially offer to some of the visitors today. Can you tell them a little bit about that? Yes, I do. So for the first 20 visitors um, who reach out, I will um, have a quick Zoom call connection with you, and I will help you figure out the first three topics that you can use for your blog, because I know every e-commerce or service provider needs different connection points with their audience, and I'd love to help you figure out a way to begin that. So. For the first 20, I will hop on a call with you and your first three blog topics. That is amazing, guys. So you need to take her up on this. Contact Jill. Let her know that you are a visitor and that you love listening to this podcast episode and you would love to have her help and she would be happy to help you. Do not yes. miss out on this because this is not going to last forever. Also connect with her on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Jill, I cannot thank you enough for coming and joining with us and helping me to help the visitors learn a little bit more about blogging. And I hope to see you again sometime soon. Yes. Oh, it was a joy. Thanks for having me. I wish all of you all the best. I can't wait to see how your business is sparkle with your new blog. Want more help with your e-commerce brand? Subscribe to Tech Challenge Makers Conquer E-Commerce on your favorite podcast platform so that you don't miss any of the episodes that are released every week to help you grow your e-commerce shop. Plus, don't forget to leave a review so that you can help us reach more and more e-commerce shop owners. Thanks for listening. See you next week right here on Tech Challenge Makers Conquer E-Commerce.